India startup capital Bengaluru is working on something massive. It is building a quantum city where labs, hardware parks and startup hubs will come together to create a 20 billion dollar quantum economy by 2035. And with this decision, the Karnataka government wants to redefine Bengaluru from India's IT capital to the quantum capital of Asia. Welcome to our weekly Indian startup news show. I'm Pankaj, your host, and you're watching Backstage with Millennials. A channel that's also part of Zerodha 01 network. So let's begin with the very basics. Why should we even care about quantum computing? Well, in simple words, it is the next frontier in computing. See, today's computers use something called binary bits, zeros and ones to process information. On the other hand, quantum computers use something called qubits, which can exist in both states simultaneously. And this unique property of qubits opens up a world of possibilities for quantum computers. Let me give you an example. Imagine you are in the world's largest library, where every shelf holds a possible solution to a problem like say the right drug to cure Alzheimer's. Today's fastest supercomputers are like one efficient librarian which checks shelves one by one. But when there are trillions of shelves, even they can take years. A quantum computer on the other hand is like having a librarian who can read through millions of shelves at once. And that's why simulating molecules for drug discovery, a process that might take even a supercomputer months, can be done by a quantum computer in just hours. This means we can have faster vaccines, new cancer treatments, or materials for clean energy that we haven't even discovered yet. So Bengaluru's quantum city is in a way giant leap into the future. And Chief Minister Siddharamaiya has laid out a detailed roadmap to make it a reality. And this starts with people. The state government will introduce quantum learning in schools, scaling programs in more than 20 colleges, and 150 PhD fellowships every year. The aim is to create a generation of quantum-ready scientists. Next comes the research. And here Karnataka is aiming big. It is planning to develop a thousand qubit processor and then piloting its use in healthcare, agriculture, defense, and cyber security. Then there is infrastructure. Quantum City will host India's first quantum hardware park, four innovation zones and a dedicated fab line to manufacture components. And finally, there is a quantum venture capital fund. They'll back over 100 startups, support more than 100 patents and generate 200,000 jobs, including 10,000 high skilled ones. And to support this ambitious plan, Bengaluru will also host Nobel laureates and scientists at an annual conclave. And a new international task force will attract global investment and partnerships. Now, if all of this sounds too ambitious, well, that's because it is. But history shows that it can be done. Take Shenzhen in the 1980s. Back then, it was a fishing village. And then China declared it a special economic zone. And within decades, it became the world's factory. And one of the secrets behind it was clustering. Every supplier you needed from circuit boards to casing was close by. And this density shrank the time from idea to product from years down to just weeks. And Karnataka is now trying to do exactly same with quantum technology. The state has just announced a 6.17 acre campus in Hesargatta, which is around 20 kilometers from Bengaluru. And this facility will host startups, research labs, scientists, and hardware parks in one place. And the idea is to create a dense network to work together on this important technology. Also, one thing to note here is that other countries have already been working on this for years. China, for example, has already poured $15 billion into quantum research. Its photonic quantum computer, Xu Zhang, solved a problem in just 200 seconds that would have taken the world's fastest supercomputer 2.5 billion years. And then there's the US. Their Department of Energy has invested $575 million into national quantum centers. And Congress has proposed another $2.5 billion. And that's just on the government side that private sector is doing so much more. So for example, Google has already shown their quantum chips solving benchmark problems that classical systems can't. And a startup there called SciQuantum just raised $1 billion with the goal of building a million qubit computer. India by comparison has committed only 6,000 crore rupees, that is around $750 million. And this is under the national quantum mission until 2031. And this is why Karnataka's quantum city is so crucial. It is putting India in a race which it can't afford to lose. See, if India sees itself as one of the top three powers along with US and China, we also need to compete with them in sectors like AI and quantum computing. We can't be dependent on others for everything. And Bengaluru is our best bet to do it. It is already India's startup capital, it has IASC next door, there's a lot of venture capital, and more than half of the global GCCs in India are located here. And so if there's one city that can do it, it is Bengaluru. Now, before we move on to the next item, I want to quickly talk about this founders meetup we are planning for D2C founders in Bangalore. So last month, we organized this offline 
online event for early stage health tech founders and it was a great experience we had a vc in the house and everyone got a chance to interact with him and so for this month we are planning a small meetup kind of event for founders building in the d2c space in bangalore and the idea is to discuss various problems we are facing it could be in distribution or manufacturing or even a high cac i feel it'll be a great opportunity to learn share and meet with the other founders building in the same space so the date for this meetup is 19 september which is next friday and yeah the only criteria is that you should already be working on your d2c startup and not just be in the idea stage so if this sounds like something that you would want to attend fill out the form in the description down below also you can share the link with any of your friends who you think would be interested in attending it and now getting back to the video all right next up in the news it has been just 3 weeks since india banned real money gaming and the fallout has been massive overnight india's biggest gaming companies dream 11 mpl zupi games 24 into 7 had their business model shut down and this wasn't a small industry either real money gaming in india was estimated at more than 23 billion dollars with over 400 million users playing fantasy sports poker rummy and casual money games and let's start with mpl more than 50% of their revenue came from india and once the ban came through mpl had to lay off around 300 employees which was about 60% of their india team the company is now pushing free to play games at home and betting on markets like the us and brazil dream 11 was hit even harder its co-founder harsh jain admitted that the ban wiped out 95% of dream sports revenue and 100% of its profits and now dream 11 has shut down paid fantasy contests and is now trying to survive with free to play games its sports streaming platform fan code a merchandise brand sports drip and they've even launched a fintech app called dream money in an effort to try to retain some of their users then we have another gaming unicorn games 24 into 7 which ran rummy circle and my 11 circle and they have laid off nearly 500 employees which is about 70% of their workforce even zupi had to lay off around 1 70 employees which is around 30% of their team and now the company is pivoting from real money gaming to short video content with the launch of Zupi Studio and they plan on creating 1 to 3 minute mini episodes across genres like drama thriller comedy and romance focused on mobile first entertainment Now moving on to some quick news updates. Licious has shut down its plant-based meat brand Uncrave to focus on profitability ahead of their IPO. The company entered the plant-based meat market in 2022 but struggled to scale due to a weak demand. And now the company wants to double down on its core, which is fresh meat and seafood business as it works towards a profitable listing which is expected sometime in 2026. Next up, OpenAI is in talks with Reliance Jio to bring its massive 500 billion dollar target project to India. The plan includes setting up a 1 gigawatt hyper scale data center which would be one of the largest in the country also the deal is not final yet and reliance is not the only one open ai is talking to they are also talking to other data center companies like yota data services e2e networks controllers data centers and sifi technologies next up oyo's parent travel travels has rebranded to prism which is an umbrella corporate entity for all their businesses to reflect their expanded global portfolio and longer term vision and this new name was picked from 6000 plus public submission in a global naming contest Now let's move into the funding news segment for today's video. This week Indian startups raised a total of 41 million dollars, which is significantly lower than last week's 187 million dollars. Now let's look at some of the companies that have raised funds this week. The first one I want to talk about is Gurugram based True Frost and Butler, which makes big heavy duty kitchen and cooling equipment that you see in restaurants, cafes, ice cream shops and bakeries. Stuff like commercial refrigerators, cold rooms, food prep counters and display cabinets. And they have raised 7 million dollars. After that we have Hyderabad based defense startup Indrajal it is basically a smart security guard for the skies it uses ai to constantly watch for drones figure out if they are a threat and take them on its own which makes it perfect for protecting airports borders and power plants anywhere drones could cause serious damage and they have raised 48 crore rupees in their pre series a round following that we have bengaluru based cookware brand ember which makes pots and pans that are totally non toxic that means their non stick coating is made from clay and water so you don't have to worry about harmful chemicals like ptfe pfa lead or cadmium in your food and they have raised 3.2 million dollars in their seed round next we have noida based deep tech startup endure which makes smart drones designed for serious tasks like delivering medicine to remote places helping in rescue operations surveillance and defense and one of their flagship drones is called sabal which is their heavy lift model that can carry big payloads over long routes another one is vibram which is more suited for versatile missions like monitoring or supply drops and they have raised 2.85 million dollars and finally we have mumbai based biotech startup 
biocraft foods which is making meat in a lab instead of raising animals and what they do is they take chicken cells then feed them in a nutrient mix and use 3d printing to shape them like real meat things like chicken pieces or nuggets and they've raised 2 crore rupees in their pre seed round all right that's all the startup news i have for you this week thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one